Shalom Israel. This is Daniel Ben Yashrael, and I'm here to bring you another life lesson about the truth that the Most High has established before his chosen people. There's a lot of wolves out there that refuse to teach you the truth and acknowledge Yahweh, our Creator. This video is about the true way to atone yourself in captivity. Is it the way of Jesus or is it the way of Yahweh, the creator of all things? We know a lot of Christians always ask a Yah only brother, how do you atone for sins without Christ? How do you have mercy? Without Christ, you're basically going to die. But the Yah only believers are still alive and still obtaining mercy and they do not believe in Christ. How is this possible? We cannot be ignorant of this matter. Is it simply because Yah never said anything about believing in Christ in order to have mercy and that is your atonement? Have the Most High ever said anything like that? We know he never said anything about Christ should be your mercy. You should believe in him. Therefore, you should have mercy. He never said no thing like that. So why do we blindly follow this thing when it haven't proceeded out of the creator's mouth? That is foolish. That is asinine. And you should go back to your shell and regroup your thoughts and read the Old Testament. To begin this lesson, we must understand that the covenant is everlasting. One thing we must understand about the Old Testament, the true words of the Most High Yah, there isn't no phrase anywhere in his end that we can obtain mercy. Can't you understand that the Most High simply want us to just repent in captivity? That is our atonement. It's to... Shalom. If you made it this far, I want to congratulate you. You really want to be edified. I want to begin with the Christian's claim about their atonement. The Christian's atonement is the alleged Passover, i.e. when Christ's blood was shed for many. Obviously, if you have read the whole entire Old Testament, then you should know that the Passover had nothing to do with the shedding of blood in return for mercy that has completely changed when you have reached the New Testament but in the Old Testament the purpose of the Passover was the killing of the firstborn to show Israel the most high wonderful great works now you see how the Christians had changed the most high glory into Christ Therefore, the Passover, you shall always remember the shedding of the blood of Christ and not the Passover of the killing of the firstborn when Israel came out of Egypt. Let's go ahead and expose this falsified documents of the New Testament. All right. 
let's begin with the Christians claim about their atonement I ask my fellow viewers to be logical instead of spiritual do not try to add your interpretation of what you deem as spiritual with logic this is the most high words versus Jesus words versus the authors of the New Testament words if it ain't thus says Yahweh or Yah or whatever type of name that you give our creator then it ain't valid you hear me it's not valid use logic be logical use your intelligence do not be spiritual do not have the spirit of stupidity while I'm going over this lesson because you got to be intelligent to understand and follow what I am speaking alright now let's dive into this first part alright the Christians atonement is the alleged Passover when Christ's blood is shed for many when I say many I'm not talking about the Israelites because when you read Paul's writings even though a lot of y'all oppose Paul but regardless he's still one of the followers in the authors of the New Testament so regardless you still follow Paul even if you eject his writings because he wrote dang near the whole New Testament you didn't even know about it but my next part when I get into the history of the New Testament you're going to know who wrote the New Testament this is all the New Testament series so hey it is what it is you're just going to find out how how much of an idolatry you was really in following the traditions of man mankind right so I say it again the Christmas atonement is the alleged Passover when Christ's blood is shed for many here is the letters not scriptures but letters that was stated within the book of Jesus this is 1st John 1 chapter 1 verse 7 KJV version but if we walk in the light as he is in the light we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ is son, his son cleanseth us from all sin everything is in red is the main parts that you need to pay attention to remember this the atonement I'm showing you what the Christians believe is their atonement in exchange for mercy. Freedom from death. Freedom from punishment. You're not responsible for your own responsibilities. But it says the blood of Jesus Christ is his son cleanseth us from all sin from all sin so it doesn't matter if you committed adultery it doesn't matter if you killed somebody it doesn't matter if you did sex trafficking it doesn't matter whatever you done in your life even if you're on pagan worship even if you did the most thing the most high hated the worst thing the most high hated you are technically free from that sin because of the blood of Christ it said from all sin So that means your law in the New Test I mean in the Old Testament isn't valid if you got the blood of Jesus on you. You can do whatever you want practically. Do you understand that? Use your logic. I'm mainly talking to the Israelites that push this jump. Cause I know the Gentiles really ain't understand it. Because all their lives, all their generations that ever since they've been on this earth, they've been into paganism. So this is something easy they that they, they can accept. Alright. And it says 
This is Romans chapter 3 verse 25 Whom God have sent forth to be through faith in his blood Through faith, 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 faith You got to believe in his blood To declare his righteousness For the remission, remission of sins That are past The sins you already did that are past You're clean from them Through the forbearance of God so what's the main points in this verse and this letter through the faith in his blood and the remission exchange pardon divorce of sins that are past so his blood cleansed for what we learned from these two verses already his blood cleansed us all from sin and through and having faith belief in his blood to declare his righteousness which makes him righteous his blood make him righteous that's technically what it's saying he didn't have to do anything else his blood automatically made him righteous never heard of this in my life but when you read it in context that's exactly what it's saying be a context reader logical reader for the remission of sins that are past so every sin that you had committed since you had the faith in his blood it's all gone no matter if you keep law or not it don't matter what you do your sins is gone keep in law without punishment basically that's what you're doing Revelations 1 and 5 and from Jesus Christ who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead he is not the first begotten of the dead and it said the prince of the kings of the earth unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood all your sins was washed away just like the preacher say wash my sins away Ooh, wash my sins away oh lord mm -hmm. you know what they do you already know what they do now what we learned we already know if we read the whole Old Testament, which is the everlasting covenant, which is the everlasting words of the Most High. The first begotten of the dead was not J a JC. We had children raised from the dead. Elijah, he raised several people from the dead. And there's no telling what our ancestors did way back then. That's not even documented of raising people from the dead. And it says he's the prince of, of the kings of the earth. He is not the prince of the kings of the earth. Because you never even sat on the throne a day in your life. But I'm getting ahead of myself. But the main context of this is he washed your sins away with his own blood. The verse we learned before that you got to have faith in his blood. And the verse before we know the verse before that his his blood makes him righteous. His blood makes him righteous. That's what was in the verse right there. His blood makes him righteous and his blood cleans all your sins. No law, no repercussion. You see how I'm explaining this? It's, this is the way I'm explaining this is going to keep you in this. I explain this though real good that even a baby, even a simple man, even a, the most uneducated man on this earth can understand what I'm saying. Matthew 26 verse 28 For this is my blood of the New Testament What do testament mean? Covenant, agreement Of the new covenant 
He trying to make himself like a bullock when Moses had cut the bullock in front of the children of Israel at Mount Sinai. He sprinkled the blood seven times and said, this is the blood. And they was purified. He trying to, he trying to uh, compare himself to the bullock, but it's not even documented in the New Testament that he doing it. But if you're a scholar reader, if you're a context reader, you see what he trying to do here. And it ain't working. Human blood is not what the Most High required. But it said, For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for the many, which is shed for the many, for many, for many, for the remission of sins, for the exchange for the sins. My blood is exchanged for sins. So therefore, since I killed myself, since I offered myself up, my blood destroys sin. Sins don't exist no more. You get what I'm saying. When you when I break down the word remission, you're gonna see what I'm saying. So what did we learn? I gotta keep going back so it can stay in your mind. His blood washed away the sins. Having faith in his blood, his blood makes him righteous. It's the exchange for sins, the remission of sins. The blood of Jesus cleanses cleanse you all from sin. You see, go back down. John eight twenty one and verse twenty four. They then said Jesus again unto them, I go my way, and ye seek, and ye shall seek me, and shall die in your sins. Now he's saying you're going to die in your sins If you're going to come seek me Whether I go Ye cannot come Because he finna die He gonna die You you ain't coming back I don't know Of course I don't know where you're going to see him Unless you get it Unless you die You probably ain't going to see him when you die And it says verse 24 It said I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins. For if you believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. So he basically, he became two-faced right here, indecisive. First he said, if you seek me, you're going to die in your own sins. You cannot come where I come. You can't go to heaven. You can't come to my kingdom. <laughs> But all through his so-called mission, he said, oh, y'all going to come to my kingdom. Kingdom of God, that's my kingdom. Y'all coming, all of a sudden, you ain't coming. You cannot come where I'm coming. I said, therefore, unto you that ye should die in your sins. Now he's saying you should die in your sins. But if ye believe not that I am he, ye should die in your sins. So you got to believe that he is he. So that's another thing. Believing in him means you believe in his blood and you believe that his blood is righteous. His blood makes him righteous. Don't know how that is possible, but your blood makes you righteous. And his blood cleanses you from his sin, your sins. Having faith in his blood, it's the exchange for sins. His blood washed away your sins. His blood is the New Testament, the new covenant. And the covenant is the exchange for sins, thus showing you that Jeremiah 31 is not about Jesus Christ because he just told you what that covenant was. And that covenant was the remission of sins, the exchange for sins. And Jeremiah 31 or chapter 30 does not talk about the exchange for sins for one killing himself. That's the covenant. Of the New Testament to leave the laws of the Most High and just do what you will, do what you want. Ain't no repercussions because sins don't affect you, punishment don't affect you. And he said, oh, I skipped one, my bad. Romans 5 11. And not only so, but we also, but we also joy in God through our, not for to say that word, 
Jesus Christ. But whom we have now received the atonement. How did they receive the atonement? Through the blood. What is the atonement? The remission of sins. How to acquire that? By having faith that he is he. That, that Jesus is he. By having faith that he is he. You believe in his blood. His blood is righteous. This blood makes him righteous. His blood cleanses you from his sins. His blood is the new covenant. And the only thing you got to do is believe. Now people will go back and say, oh, you got to keep the laws too. That's not true because if you got to keep the laws, he just straight up just showed you right here. If you believe in his blood, you not affected by the repercussions of not keeping the law. Cleanse from the sins. You can literally go out here and shoot somebody in the head. And spiritually, the sin won't affect you. Now, you might go to jail. It's just because this America's trying to be and be in Christianity. How can you be in Christianity but still lock people up? How can you be in Christianity when your so-called leader Jesus just straight up say he that he without sin cast the first stone to the adulterer that was supposed to be put to death? So he said, "Let the adulterer walk scot free. Don't let nothing happen to him because y'all are all sinful." So I'm gonna cleanse all y'all sins, right? So y'all won't have to die for y'all sins. So y'all won't have to endure any punishment. You are free from the law like Paul told you. How did he understand this whole concept and y'all didn't? It's because he wrote the concept. And every time y'all see law, y'all thought he talking about the law of the Old Testament. He was talking about J.C. was talking about his own laws. Matthew chapter 5. How y'all can't see that? America and any type of Christian Christian country are hypocrites because they lock people up for doing wrongdoings and when they're supposed to be free from their sin. That's a true Christian. To do what you want, do what you will. And be free from sin. You're like a baby. You're a new creature. What happens to a newborn baby? They do all the things they want. And don't get punished for it because they don't know no better. Now, that's exactly what you will. Christians, you're like a newborn baby. They do what you want and don't know no better. You're like Adam and Eve before the destruction. Then know the difference between good and evil. Think all because you believe in the blood of Jesus. That's what I'm saying. Now we know under Yah. That is not true. But I'm just showing you the Christian concept in a simple version that you can understand. Because those of you, like I said, if you say you got to keep law, that's not true. Because he just straight up said you free from your sins. In a simple man's term, you don't you are not accountable of the repercussions of not keeping the law. You can keep it and you don't have to keep it. Regardless, you ain't going to get punished. Cuz that's what his blood is for. Christians, that's the Christian theology. Uh, you can listen to a lot of preachers. If preachers straight up just straight up tell you, we don't have to keep the law. This is the concept. I don't get how you Israelites don't understand this. When you see the word law, he's not talking about the laws of Moses. He's talking about his own laws that he established when he came at that time. Now let's move on. Now, 
you see that the Christians believe that Jesus' blood gives them cover for their own sins. Therefore, you have mercy. Oh, I messed up. And all you have to do is believe in him. That is technically what is stated. In the Israelite community, they will say, how do you atone for your sins without specific animals in captivity? Without the specific animals in captivity. That's what they ask you. The Hebrew Israelites will ask you, how do you atone for your sins? Then, when you try to answer the question, they quickly overtalk you. They become outspoken. They have the spirit. And over talk you before you even try to give them an answer and give you an answer to their own question that they already asked you. Without Christ's blood, you won't even be living right now, Ock. Without Christ's blood, you won't even have mercy right now, Ock. It's going to be death to you on that day because you don't believe. You don't believe in the blood. Blood game. That's all that is. Blood game. I wouldn't be surprised if that's where blood game came from. Awesome Christianity stuff. If you don't believe in the Messiah, you're going to be put to death. It's crazy, ain't it? All this stuff. They try to make their religion different from the Christianity and the church religion, but it's all still the same concept. But they try to keep the most high laws at the same time. But don't even realize if you don't keep the laws, you still gonna be saved through his blood because they believed. Even though the most high straight up said you would get punished for that, as if the most high had changed his mind on it. But I'm going to show you that the most I ain't changed his mind later on down the line. It might be in part two or it might be in part one. It, it depends on whenever I make it to this step. You get me? So that is the question. They say, how do you atone for your sins? Without in captivity. Without sacrifice. As if there's only one way to atone for your sins. It's crazy. But let's get into the etymology of remission. Remission. Let's see the definition of remission. Remission. Strong's G859. We got to look at the New Testament's definitions of it. It says, Ephes, Ephes, Strong's eight, I mean Strong's G eight fifty nine in the following manner: remission nine times, forgiveness six times, deliverance one time, liberty one time. We already know it's remission because that's the main definition. But we got to look at the words that's after remission Because we got to look at the words that's parallel to it We got forgiveness six times So it's highly That's the highly most intelligent answer is Forgiveness And also deliverance But and Well mainly forgiveness But when we get down here to the main breakdown of the word It says Release from bondage or, or imprisonment Release from bondage of what? Release of a prison or a imprisonment. Release from a prison from what? Who imprisoned you? What had you in bondage from the beginning? Sin. Freedom from sin. Basically, is forgiveness or pardon of sins, letting them go as if they had never been committed. Like I just told you. And the follow, I mean, in the former passages I just read, remission of the penalty, punishment. What punishment? Penalty. What punishment? Remission, exchange of the penalty. Man, come on now. 
Bondage of sin. Sin is your slave master. Basically, for a simpler understanding, for definition one. Freedom from punishment. It says freedom figuratively. Everything's figuratively. Pardon, deliverance, forgiveness, liberty. We don't even have to say remission because that's the um, root that we break it down. Now let's go into a deeper root. The child root. I mean, not the child root, because we just broke down the child root. Let's look at the parent root. Where do remission come from? I didn't put the word because it was a long word. I wasn't even going to be able to understand it. But it means leave, forgive, suffer, let, forsake, let alone. 52 times, leave. That's the most likely answer. Leave. What is leaving? What is walking out the door? Sin. Sin was at your door. Now it's leaving your door. It cannot come back. To bind, go on away, or depart. And they gave you a little definition, like an example, of a husband divorcing his wife. When a husband divorces his wife, she, he sends her out the door. While on her belongings, she is no longer with you forever. You cannot get back with a woman that you divorce. It's law because she slept down. She slept with another man. You cannot go back with her. That's defilement. Constantly in defilement every day. But it says a husband divorcing his wife. So look at that as you divorce the sin. You divorce sin. You send the sin out your door, like I just told you. To send forth year up to expire. Sin expired. The time expired. The time of sin has expired. To let go, you're letting go of sin. To let be, you're letting be sin. To disregard, you're disregarding sin. To leave, you're letting sin leave. Not to discuss now. I don't know what that means in that nature, but we're no longer discussing sin because it's no longer valid. To omit, vanish, neglect. Don't care for it. To let go. Give up the debt. We no longer have debt to sin. Forgive. To remit. To forget. To give up. Keep no longer. We no longer entitled to sin. That is the definition. The child, the child root. I mean the parent root of remission. So every time you see remission of sins. You see. uh, No I'm saying. Let's get into it. See now we get into the basic understanding for for remission so so the phrase we hear remission of sin actually renders to freedom of sin to let go of sin to disregard sin to omit sin to keep sin no longer to expire sin simply divorcing sin so basically Jesus has the power to make sin extinct no longer existing so you can simply kill someone and be free of punishment just like a baby remember that has remember he that has i messed it up he that has not with sin cast the first stone thus causing a woman to walk free after she cheated on her husband letting an adultery live even though the most high commands us to kill the adultery because that pollutes the land that has evil in the land you cannot let evil thrive through the land as you let evil thrive through the land the land becomes more corrupt and rejects you so therefore you got to go to captivity because the land will continue to curse you it's the agreement it's the bondage that's how it is I hope y'all understand what I'm saying man even if you have to replay this video, go back and look at it. Now it says freedom of punishment from the law. Freedom to do as you will as long you believe that Jesus is he. Basically, have faith in the blood. Like I told y'all. Have faith in the blood. Sin no longer affects you. The law. No longer, no longer affects you. Deuteronomy 28 no longer affects you. If everybody believed in Jesus back then, 
we would have never went into captivity. That's basically what it's saying. But we know what's true. The intelligent ones, the enlightened ones, the logical ones that don't thrive on fake spirituality. Now that's interesting. So therefore, allegedly, Chris, I mean Christ, I should call him Chris, Christ's blood protects you from the curses of Deuteronomy 28, causing it to have no effect. Remember, in the definition, remember, I mean remission, forgiveness or pardon of sins, letting them go as if they had never been committed. Remission of the penalty, penalty, I need to get my words right, i.e. punishment. Because sin equals evil, sin also equals punishment because eventually you're going to get that punishment sometime in your life, which means you're free to do what you will because you are no longer bound by sin. You're like a baby, not knowing good or evil. So technically, the meaning of Passover has been changed from the killing of the firstborn plague, i.e. the destroyer. Letting Israel free from Egypt, from slavery, from bondage, to freedom of sin. It's been changed to all that to freedom of sin. And we know in the story of Exodus, the Most High has never said anything about the freedom of sin dealing with the Passover. And that's, I'm going to make a new video where I'm going to be breaking down Passover. Just to let you know. That's part of the atonement series. But it says, do you understand what this means just by shedding blood? Shedding of blood? You don't have to keep the law at all. Remission of sin. Remission of sin. So if that is the case, why did Israel go into captivity and died by millions over the years if they was free from sin and don't say it because they didn't keep the law because like Christ just straight up told you his blood cleanses you from sin so somebody lying here and it's not me because I'm reading it at face value I'm explaining it to you on face value let check this out People that even kept Christ's law in the Old Testament law, they still went into captivity. They still died. So, what was valid? Don't get mad at me. Don't come around. Don't come over here calling me a liar. I'm reading how it is. Why did they go into captivity? Why did they die by millions? over the years because from my understanding there was plenty of Israelites that kept the law in the New Testament Pharisees Sadducees priest uh, Zacharias they kept the most high laws and they still went into captivity and got massacred by Romans would have kept living and they didn't follow Jesus then believe the abomination of desolation they were supposed to be from there they were supposed to hold on I don't know what I said right now. they were supposed to be yeah my bad I messed up right there but they were supposed to be free from their punishment I know this stuff could be funny when I mess up y'all but you know what I'm saying just bear with me I might mess up on my words here and there. But yeah, they were supposed to be free from their punishment, but they wasn't free. They were supposed to be free from their punishment, man. So, why did they get punished if they was protected by the blood? I don't understand. I understand. Y'all don't understand. One of the terms for remission is indeed pardon. To be pardoned. Just like in, in the uh, book of Hezekiah. In 
which is the book of Kings in the book of Kings. Hezekiah was trying to make Israel keep the laws again, but the priest wasn't purifying all this other stuff, and the Most High had pardoned them. He, the Most High just wanted them to keep the law. He pardoned them for that one time. The Most High do pardon you sometimes. But you're going to have to pay for it. Don't think. You ain't going to have no repercussions, repercussions later on because, yes, indeed, they did pay for it later on. They still went into captivity. But the most I gave them peace that day. But one of, like I said, one of the terms is pardon. Israel was not pardoned from their punishment or sin at all in the New Testament. You see the big lie here, don't you? No mercy. And for those Christian Israelites that say you got to keep law in order to avoid punishment. Here is the proof. Oh, I messed up in this document. Here is the proof that if you believe in Jesus, you are not under the law. I will highlight I will highlight read the key points and put brackets with with words in it to help you understand basically this whole concept. So I'm highlighting everything in red and I put the stuff in brackets. Yes, that's adding to these fake letters anyway. So what? They're letters. Romans chapter 5, 11 through 21. All right. And it says, and not only so, but we also joy in God through our Jesus Christ by whom we have. So they're going through the uh this this so-called Messiah, by whom we have now received the atonement. They received the atonement through how they received the atonement through the shedding of the blood of JC and believing in it. Now here we go. Remember Romans is Paul's writing, so sometimes it is difficult to understand. So that's why I put all these things in there. Now it says, wherefore, as by one man, that one man is Adam, as by one man, sin entered into the world, and death by sin, Adam dies. And so death passed upon all men, for, for that all have sinned. Since we came from Adam, therefore we all suffer for what he did which is death you see you see the concept right sin uh, Adam brought the sin in the world and you know somebody for to come take it out for until the law sin was in the world here we go this is proof showing that y'all don't keep the law if you believe in Jesus if you believe in Jesus you don't keep the law if you don't believe in him then you keep the law because we know Jesus is idol worship It's a false god It's paganism But it says For until the law Sin was in the world But sin is not Imputed When there is no law When there is no law There is no sin But when there is a law There is sin How do y'all How can y'all understand that But sin is not imputed when there is no law. So when there is no law, there is no sin. The law, first five books of Moses. All of that expired. Which means the law not here, which means sin is not here. Now, how does that happen? Since Jesus died for your sins, there is no law. Basically, the terminology. Y'all, please forgive me for teaching such a dangerous lesson. Because, man, this stuff is even making my stomach hurt even talking about this. It says, nevertheless, death, which is sin, reigned from Adam to Moses. Even over them that had not sinned. That's crazy. 
had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression. Who is the figure of him that is to come, which is JC. Or whoever's going to come destroy Jerusalem in 70 AD, which is Emperor Titus. But. Man, 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 man. He said. Basically. They're trying to say the law is sin. Sin is the law. So if you keep in sin, you keep in the law. You're not keeping the law. You're not in sin. And you need something to cover you while you're not keeping the law. You need the blood of Jesus. Nevertheless, death, just understand it says death, which is sin, reign from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression. So even if you didn't sin and didn't do nothing, death still applies to you. That doesn't make any sense because the Most High will prolong your life if you don't do no wrong. This is crazy. A death is on, upon everybody. It don't matter. You are, this, this body is like a car. Sometimes it's, it's going to have to wear down. We're going to have to change. We're going to have to change vehicles. You buy a new vehicle. You got to die to change a vehicle. Verse 15. But not as the offense. So also is the free gift. What is the free gift? His death free you from sin. His blood is the free gift. The free gift goes to everybody. For if through the offense of one of one, many be dead, basically saying through the offense of Adam committing sin, many got to die from much from much more the grace or which you will say the mercy of God, the gift by grace, the gift by mercy, which is by one. Jesus Christ have abounded unto many now what does that mean I'm gonna make it in simple terms by one man many died by Adam since he was disobedient a lot of his children would die death sin but by grace which is the blood of Jesus many shall live sin is no more that's all they said. That's all they really had to say instead of trying to make this confusing to a lot of people. Because now you're thinking, what is what is the gift? Is it the Holy Ghost? It, it, what is it? Is it the blood? Is it is, is the fish in the in the bread? No. He tell you exactly what it is. Adam talking down on Adam. Look, you saying I'm coming to fix that BS that you did. I'm going to die for it. And uh, and the sin is not, not going to be no more. That's basically what's happening. Moving on, verse 16. And not as it was by one that sinned. And not as it was by one that sinned, Adam. So is the gift for the judgment. Was by one to condemnation. The judgment's was Deuteronomy 28 curses by one is sin created the judgment the condemnation Deuteronomy 28 curses you see where I'm going with this you see but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification you're free from the Curses the free gift, Jesus' blood covered you. Now you're free. The law, free. You're free from the law. You're free, man. For if by one man's offense, death reigned by one. One man offense, many gotta die. 
much more which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ from Adam to Jesus Christ sin ending at Jesus now life death was from Adam to Jesus now after Jesus it is so called life man This is a straight up blasphemy, man. It's it's sickening to even speak this stuff because I know this is BS. Like you go outside in public today and just see a dude just drop dead. And he believed in Jesus so bad. Come on, man. How obvious do this stuff got to be? Verse 19. For as by one man's obedience, many were made sinners. I mean, for by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. Talk it down on Adam again. So by the obedience of one, many made righteous. This is crazy, man. So since one was disobedient, everybody got get punished. So since one was obedient, everybody is righteous. Adam, disobedient, death reigned. Jesus obeyed, don't know what he obeyed because he didn't keep law. Everybody righteous. And remember, the belief they said up there in the past verses I read, it said that his blood makes him righteous. So him killing his, I mean, killing him, his blood covered y'all, automatically made y'all righteous. It's like a barrier, a righteous barrier. His blood, a righteous barrier that shields you from sin. You see, you see the breakdown. You see what I just did. It was the breakdown, the drop right there. His blood makes you righteous. Kill him. His blood spear out. Y'all covered. Now all of a sudden you righteous. It just straight up just told you right here. For as by as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedient obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, verse 20, moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abound, grace did much more abound. So they basically said the blood of Jesus overtook sin and destroyed it. Since the law came, you was bound to death. But since Jesus came, you are bound to life. Therefore, the law has no effect, no matter if you keep it or not. Because his grace was much more abound. It overtook sin. So it don't matter if you keep law or not. That's basically what it's saying. That is that as sin have reigned unto death, even so my grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus. Jesus Christ. I'm not saying that word because he ain't mine. But. Wow. You can be righteous without keeping the law with only the belief of Jesus. The belief of his blood is covering you. <sighs> Let me show y'all something. Let me show y'all something real quick. This is what you look like. Literally in a, in a, in a, uh, in a, uh, mindset, that's what y'all look like. If it pops up all the way, that's what you look like. You look like some nasty vampires. That's what you look like. I'm covered by his blood. 
You look like cannibals. There you go. That's what you look like. Right there. When you say I'm covered by his blood, that's what you look like. You look evil. Sickening. It's evil. So now that we understand remission, let's look into the Christian's version of atonement. Atonement, Strong's G2643, Catalaga, wait, Catalaga, 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 that's how you say it, Catalaga, or Catalaga. But it says reconciliation, reconciliation, atonement, reconciling. And right here it says number three, exchange, to exchange. Atonement means to exchange. Remission means to exchange. Of the business of money changers, exchanging equivalent values. Here we go right here for adjustments of difference, reconciliation, restor to rest restoration to favor. In the New Testament's version, it says in the New Testament of the restor restoration of the favor of God to sinners that repent and put their trust in an expiator, death of Christ. And we know that's the blood of Jesus and everything. They BS definition. And the main words is means to exchange figuratively, figuratively adjustment, atonement, reconciliation. Y'all say divine, but when you think of divine, you think of spirituality. You have, you don't have no idea what a spirituality is. Now we're looking at the root word. We got to go into the Old Testament for the root word because apparently the Greek doesn't have a root word for atonement. So we're looking at kafar, 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 a primitive root, which is the parent root to cover, to cover, to cover, to expiate figuratively or condone, a place it or cancel. Appease, make atonement, cleanse, forgive, be merciful, pacify, pardon, purge. Pardon, purge. The words I got in red. The words I got in red is the main words, the key words. So we can see the connection between remission and atonement. Pardon, forgive, cover expiate and free the parallel words between one another basically you're exchanging something in order to free yourself from a punishment so that you may have some peace which is mercy a pardon basically new testament believers believe that the blood of jesus pardons them from the sin and punishment that is the claim Now, since we learned that, since we learned what Jesus requires for atonement, let's view wh what the Almighty Yahweh stated: what you needed for atonement of sins. This is what the Most High said. Now, here we go, people. This is us right here. To not only Yah, only people that only follows the words of the Most High. This is what the Most High requires for you. To atone for your sins. The items. New Testament uh, item. They only needed the blood of Jesus. That's it. That's it. Now it says. In Leviticus chapter 4. Verse 3. If the priest. If the priest. That is anointed. Which means a high priest. Which is a real messiah. Do sin according to the sin of the people, then let him 
bring for his sin which he has sinned a young bullock without blemish unto Yahweh for a sin offering Leviticus chapter 4 22 to through 23 and 28 and it says, when a ruler has sinned, which means a king, and have done somewhat through ignorance against any of the commandments of Yah, our Elohim, concerning things which should not be done and, and, and is guilty, or if his sin, wherein he have sinned, come to his knowledge, he shall bring his offering a kid of the goats, a male without blemish. So we got bullock. We got a young bullock without blemish. And we got a kid goat, a male without blemish. Or if his sin, which he has sinned, come to his knowledge, then he shall bring a offering, his offering, a kid of the goats, a female without blemish. So we got a kid goat male and we got a kid goat female without blemish we got leviticus chapter 5 6 through 7 11 13 15 through 16 and this says and he shall bring his trespass offering unto yah for his sin which he has sinned a female from the flock a lamb or a kid of the goats for a sin offering and the priest shall make an atonement for him concerning his sin a lamb or a kid goat and the priest shall make an atonement for him concerning his sin and if he be not able to bring a lamb if he not be if you can't bring a lamb then he shall bring for his trespass which he had committed two turtle doves or two young pigeons unto Yah one for a sin offering and the other for a burnt offering but if he be not able to bring two turtle doves or two young pigeons then he that sin shall bring for his offering the tenth part of an ephah or i mean of fine flour for a sin offering he shall put no oil upon it neither shall he put any frankincense therein for it is a sin offering man and the priest shall make an atonement for him as touching his sin as touching his sin that he has sinned in one of these and it shall be forgiven him and the remnant shall be the priest as a meat offering if a soul commit a trespass and sin through ignorance in the holy things of Yah then he shall bring for his trespass unto Yah a ram without blemish. Excuse me. Out of the flocks with an estimation by shekels of silver. After the shekels of the sanctuary for the trespass offering. And he shall make amends for, for the harm that he have done in the holy things. And shall add the fifth part of their, their two. And give it to the priest. And the priest shall make an atonement for him with the ram of the trespass offering. And, and it shall be forgiven him. By this, therefore, shall the sin of Jacob be purged. Atonement or remission. And this is all the fruit, task or work. To make a way, atone his sin when he maketh all the stones of the altar as chalk stones destroy the altars that are beaten asunder destroy them the groves false gods and images shall not stand up destroying false gods and images figuratively so let me get this straight all the highest is asking for is a female lamb without blemish, a male lamb without blemish, a young bullock, a ram without blemish, turtle doves, p 
pigeons, kid goats, male and female without blemish, money, and flower, and destroying false gods and images and altars of false gods. Get Jesus out of your heart and no longer believe in him, which is the modern, and destroy his graven images that's in your houses, such as crosses, and etc., etc. So wait a minute. We don't have to kill no human being to be saved. We don't need a blood of a human to be saved. We don't need no blood of a human to be free from sin. To be forgiven for our sins. We don't need a blood of a human. So I don't have to literally believe in some dead dude. I can literally give you a whole bag of flour. I can really, I can give you a whole bag of flour to the high priest and be forgiven for my sin that I have done. Yahweh never said anything about anything in the law about a human or half human or a half God getting himself killed in order for you to be forgiven for your sins. There is absolutely nothing in the law that permits this. There's no words of the Most High that permits this. Now, since we know there is nothing in the law about a man dying for your sins of Israel, why do Christians believe in human sacrifice? Something that Yah opposes. Well, this is an obvious answer. Isaiah 29 verse 10. Yah, for Yah poureth for Yah hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep and have closed your eyes. The prophets and the rulers and the seers hath he covered. And the meaning of this means to be asleep, be unconscious, be in heavy sleep, fall into heavy sleep, be fast asleep. The Strong's definitions, the legend, Radam. Which means to be stunned, to be stupefied, to be stupid with sleep or death. Be fast, a eh? be in deep sleep, cast into a dead that sleep or sleepeth, sleeper or sleepeth. Basically, to be stupid. He cast a spirit of stupidity on you. That's the reason y'all believe these things that y'all never said. It's the spirit of stupidity. You're stupid if you believe that Jesus died for your sins. You stupid if you believe his blood covers you. You stupid if you believe his blood destroys the law. You stupid if you believe that you are free from the punishment. That's basically what the Most High is calling you. He's calling you stupid. It's a spirit. We mainly are logical people. But what happens when the most I remove logic and place a spirit of stupidity on you? Look at our people. They believe every single stupid thing that these Christians say. Without even opening the book. They're stupid. I'm just calling you what the most I called you. Stupid. Deep sleep. you stupid. So all the most I requires you to have animals. I know the question Christians asking, how do you atone for your sins? Because we don't have those animals. And even we know back then, all the animals wasn't genetically modified. The animals is genetically modified. They they are blemished. They're impure. So how do we have sacrifice? Not one, not one time we see Yah accepted a human. Not one time we see Yah accepted a human accepted a human sacrifice in exchange for atonement for sin if he did how come there isn't no words of Yah saying this is okay is this a secret thing is this an addition to his law no it's not it's not a secret thing Yah don't accept human sacrifices on his altar it's a violation to the law Christians say human, a half human, half God blood can atone for your sins. 
Deuteronomy 4 and 2 ejects that lie. Deuteronomy 4 and 2. Ye should not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish out from it, that ye may keep the commandments of Yahuwah, your Elohim, which I command you. You Christians are not saved. And do not have mercy through your human God. That is a lie. You're in danger of judgment by the laws of life. Didn't y'all say he declare what is right? And he never change? Isaiah 45 verse 19. I have not spoken in secret. The most I have not spoken in secret. Jesus is not a secret thing. That is he is a lie. And in a dark place of the earth, I said not unto the seed of Jacob, seek me in vain. By seeking the most high through Jesus, you're seeking the most high in vain. I, Yahuwah, speak righteousness. I declare things that is right. The most high declare things that is right. The most high speak what is righteousness. So where in the law did he say he accepts human sacrifices and that a man from heaven is going to come and die for your sins and sins will be no more? Where did the most high speak that? If he spoke that, it would have been right because he is righteousness. So if he never spoke that, then therefore it is not right. It is a lie that the Gentiles created. That the Romans created to make you follow another deity and not Yahweh. They tremble when you follow Yahweh. If you follow Yah, then these Gentiles will be scared. They scared of their time to end. That's why they are millennials. They know their time is coming. That's why they rather for you to go down with them. They have something to say. Hey, they believe in false gods that we created. You might as well take them down with us too. When that judgment come. Malachi chapter 3 verse 6. For I am Yah. I change not. He don't change his mind. He don't change his law. He may sometimes pardon you for a little thing that you've done. That's why we have the, uh, the sin offerings. And when the Most High pardoned Hezekiah and them, they had to make sacrifices. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob, be not consumed. He changed not. If the laws has changed, then guess what? Jacob, house of Israel, you will be consumed. You will be no more. You will no longer exist if the laws in the covenant be changed. Because the Gentiles will automatically destroy you. They hate you. It's facts. If they could genocide the whole Negro race, they would do that. But since the law is still there, since the covenant is still there, since the promise is still there, even the covenant of the moon and the sun, until all that be destroyed, you will be destroyed. If they change that law, if the most I change the law, you will be destroyed. What part of that you don't understand? I'm going to cut it right here because I'm at one hour and eight minutes. I'm going to make a part two. I'm going to make a part two. Because this is a long, lengthy lesson, man. Look, I got over 5,738 words right there in the left um, bottom corner right there next to the, uh, the uh, Windows logo down there. So I'm going to end it right here. I'm going to have part two up. And no, it's not going to take me a long time. I'm sorry for taking a long time, man. I have a family. I'm in college. And I and I'm, I'm a state worker. So, look. It takes me time to do this stuff. I'm, I'm going to try to have it done this week or next week or the next week after. But look. Go over this stuff. Study it. Study this. All right, y'all. Peace.